Coach Brian Pearson, I've been here at Amory. This is uh, my sixth year and middle of the sixth season. Spent three previous years before that at Tremont High School. Amory is back home for me. I went to high school here. So uh, all in all, about nine years of coaching experience and my sixth year here at Amory. Coaching the boys, uh, boys team, uh, actually a couple years ago with kind of a coaching change we had, I agreed to coach the girls team for a year. So I was one and done with that, but I did both for a year and that was a interesting challenge in of itself, but do have that one year of girls experience, I guess, you know, now on my resume after that year. Uh, my dad was a coach when I was growing up. Uh, he, he was a basketball coach, so I understood the, you know, the time in the gym and being away from family on all that as, as I was growing up. But now being a coach myself, you know, what I thought and where I started early on, you know, just getting married, didn't have kids, and now it's completely different now with two boys. And so I just see you know, myself and my thoughts and stuff kind of changing year in and year out with just, you know, monumental milestones for myself as a coach. And, you know, obviously, just like anything, I feel like I've matured uh, over the years in, in learning through those experiences. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's hectic as a coach. You know, the, the time and the hours are never consistent week in to week out. But uh, it asks a lot of you. But, you know, this is just kind of becomes your, your second home and your second family. And, and these guys on the team, you know, mean a lot to me. Uh. We're going to start off with two ball and stretch just like we normally do. Work through a couple different things from there, okay? Anybody got anything? We'll talk about it some more before we leave. 10 o'clock practice tomorrow during school. Make sure you got your ride lined up. Make sure we're showing up on time. Uh, you know, coaching style, when, when you first hear that, it kind of makes you kind of think, okay, what is my coaching style? I, I feel like in playing for different coaches and, and learning maybe what I liked as a player, I feel like I tried to when I got into coaching trying to, you know, take the good from each coach that I had and try to piece that together. And I think if you kind of summed it up, I would say, uh, and I hope my players would say, I'm somewhat of a player's coach. And uh, I try to, you know, find ways to let them be involved in their experience with playing for me and playing for our school. You know, I just don't want it to always be me constantly telling them what to do. I want them to feel like they have, you know, a voice and an avenue at, with things that if they have a sense and a feel for the team or how practice is going, you know, I feel like the more that they give to it, the more they're going to be invested into what's going on and not just be 100% all my ideas. But I feel like what we've done here for six years, I feel like it's worked. I feel like we've got guys invested in what's going on. And, you know, from day one, my message to them was just trying to get something going here that, that was substantial year in and year out and then really build a program. And I think we've, we've been able to do some things along that line. It's a new day at Max South. We are excited to share some great news. In our continued effort to support Mississippi businesses, Max South is now offering local advertising support. Through high quality programming, we combine traditional television and premium digital advertising, allowing your multimedia campaign to reach your targeted audience at any time on any device. Call Max South Media Sales today at 662-701-8628. Yeah, so obviously with the philosophy, you know, and, and, and asking there, there's a lot of change that we've been dealing with. I do think there's some things from a philosophy standpoint that have not changed. And, you know, we kind of try to relate to those pretty often. Uh, but, you know, just from holding each other accountable, you know, showing up to work every day, uh, those are some philosophy things that, you know, we've got to make sure we're doing right no matter what's going on. And, and I feel like last year we preached a lot about, you know, just controlling what we could control. And, and that was if if we weren't quarantined and we got a chance to practice, then let's make sure we've taken care of everything and we don't take this for granted and we, and we are you know, unselfish and we're holding each other accountable and, and we're doing what we're supposed to do because in that moment we've been blessed with the opportunity to do it. And you know, I felt like you know, maybe that was a positive that come away from the COVID and all the changes and stuff was, I felt like you, you got to appreciate the times that you were together a little bit more because you know, you didn't know if you're going to have that taken away from you from things that were out of your control. Give me two balls on each end. Give me black on this end, white on that end. We're going Argentina pass. So we got eight white. We got eight black. We need two balls on each end. Keeping kids motivated today, I feel like, is, is a big time challenge. You know, and I, I think one thing that I try to do is, is, is be willing to change and be willing to adapt uh, to, to every team year in and year out. But even these kids today and, and what you know, what excites them and what motivates them. And I've already seen in coaching, you know, what gets them going is a little bit different than what it did for me. 
uh, because they have so many other distractions and things that they're into now, you know, and, you know, option A is you can choose to fight and battle those, you know, day in and day out and, and, and tell them to, to put all this away and it's going to be this way and that. But sometimes I feel like that creates such a negative, you know, mindset for them to where they're not excited about showing up to practice or showing up to work every day. And so I think the way that I try to motivate them is, is that they know that maybe every day is not going to be exactly the same, you know, whether that's messing up our routine in practice, if that's putting some music on, you know, if that's utilizing the weight room some, but to where there's a lot of different things happening that I feel like, you know, is helping us reach our overall goal, things that we need. And, uh, you know, that's, that's one that I think, I think it motivates them to know that it's going to be changing. It's going to be different. You know, it's going to keep our attention because, you know, I just feel like we're kind of in a entertainment society now where you, you've got to keep their attention and keep them motivated. And, you know, sometimes that's just a reminder for why we're doing something. And other times that's, you know, it may be get on the baseline and run as a, as a motivator. Off-season expectations for me uh, and, and what we're doing here at Amory, it's just, you know, from day one, it was just opening the gym up and keeping kids in the gym. You know, I just, that was a big step for us at first was, hey, you know, if you want to get any better, if this is something you want to take serious, well, you've got to spend some time at it. And I thought gradually we've been able to do that year in and year out to where, you know, now without me having to ask kids to come up here and shoot or come up here and play pickup or get a workout in, you know, they're starting to ask me. And, and that's really where I want it to be. You know, I want them to see the benefits of putting in that effort and see the results uh, when that time comes. But we've, we've started to get that going. And that's one thing I'm proud of that, you know, they're wanting to get in outside of when I'm demanding them to be here for a practice or something like that and put in that extra work. You know, the off season's all about individual time and in what you can enhance your individual game. Uh, you know, and there's gonna come a time where you bring that back to the team and you figure out how that works as a, as a piece and a role in what we're doing here as a full group. But, you know, when I think about the off season, I think about, hey, this is your time as an individual to improve and enhance your game. And, and sometimes that's having a conversation with a a kid at the end of the year and saying, hey, here's, here's maybe the outlook of where we can see you being successful here with us and maybe here's some things to work on. And then at some point you just kind of, you give them that and it's up to them to, to put in that work and, and try to improve. Some of the good attributes with this team is we've had some guys come up through the ranks, earn their role, earn their spot year in and year out. You know, whether the storm of some, some bad years and whether enjoy some success of a good year or two uh, in that process. And now we've got some younger kids coming behind them that I, they can see what that looks like year in and year out. They've got something that they can relate to inside of our program, watching guys take on, you know, maybe a small role as a younger freshman or sophomore uh, and letting that teach them and, and give them opportunities to grow and learn. And then, you know, the next year they go into maybe their junior season ask a little bit more of themselves and now as seniors the two that we have I'm just really proud of them because they've kind of they've been through it over the course of the past six years in watching us try to build and grow this program and I think that's also an attribute for this team is that they are invested uh, and it's something that they are now taking pride in what we've done and the program that we're trying to build and you know you start to see some guys come back that graduate and that's something that you know, I'm proud of as, as a coach too is it's you know, the culture that we're, you know, trying to build is something that these guys, when they graduate and go on, is something that they miss. It's something that they know is going to keep going without them, and they're proud to be a part of it. The challenge for this team is uh, we graduated three starters from last year. Two of them went on to play at the college level, uh, and so we're replacing three big pieces in and of itself. And, and like I said, got those two seniors coming back, we knew we had that, but behind them, was some youth and some inexperience. And so we utilized the summer, you know, to try to find out what, what we were gonna look like and what pieces we could use. Uh, I thought we had a good summer in doing that. Uh, and then, you know, excited for them and, and loved every minute of it, but the, the run by football all the way to the state finals, you know, put them in the, I guess that first week of December. And, and we were fortunate enough to have a group in the gym where we went ahead and started playing. I think we played eight games uh, without them. But, you know, then you look at it Everybody else is four or five weeks into their season with their group and they kind of know a lot about themselves where, you know, these guys are coming back to us first, second week in December and actually this past week and we play our first division game 
And so, man, that's just a huge challenge, you know, because you maybe had some things going with the guys that were in here. Uh, now you got a lot of pieces back in and they're trying to figure out their role. So it's just trying to speed up that process and what we're doing right now to, to really figure out who we are and who we can count on. But, you know, when I think about the biggest challenge, that's absolutely what jumps out to me with this team and this group right away. Uh, we had a good season. I think our we finished uh, 22 and eight. I believe it was our final record. What you point your finger to? We we kind of didn't do what we needed to down the stretch as far as finishing the division season. Uh, you know, putting ourselves where we wanted to be in the division tournament. Uh, we lost a game there that kind of impacted the you know where we were going to finish second or third coming out of the tournament, and that was the difference in a home game or going on the road. And, and just one of those unlucky things where we called a really tough matchup in Knoxby County in the first round last year. Uh, you know, played them, went down to the wire, and that was, you know, obviously a team that you'd like to avoid for a round or two and catch them later. But for us and how it happened, we ended up with that tough matchup in round one. And so, you know, there's some disappointment there because through the course of the season, we felt like we were a team that could make a run uh, into a couple rounds and, you know, maybe get lucky at the end of the day when you get there, but it just didn't happen for us. And, you know, and I don't know what you can really point your finger to uh, as far as why that happened. But at the end of the day, you know, I think when you look back, it was a successful season. One, you know, we're able to win some games, uh, win our county tournament. Uh, so it's definitely a positive when we look back. But as a competitor, there's still some parts there that you, hey, man, we would have loved to play some more with that group and play a few more games. But, you know, it just doesn't always go like that. So our two seniors, uh, Gray Thornton, Charleston Wallace, like I said, they've been with us since they were in seventh grade as part of our program. And just it's been really enjoyable as a coach to watch them continue to grow year in and year out. And, and just two guys that have been really coachable from day one, uh, you know, very, very little if none off the court issues. You know, they're just guys that were there every single day, all summer, wanting to play when we weren't playing, you know, and just always pushing you you know, to even be a better coach and open up the gym even more because you just had two guys that fell in love with it. And that's what you want as a coach. And so, man, just happy to see where they've gotten to as seniors. And now, obviously, you know, in the, in the middle of the season, in the heat of the battle, you know, having some tough conversation with them, asking even more of them, you know, from a leadership standpoint, uh, just constantly, you know, helping them, getting them to try to relay things that I'm wanting with our team. Because past those two seniors, we've just got a couple of juniors and a handful of sophomores. And so there's some inexperience, there's some youth there where their leadership is, is gonna be leaned on. But as far as their strengths as a player, they're just two guys that can play on both ends. They can, they can rebound, they're long, uh, get deflections, get steals. They can, they can shoot it, they can put it on the floor, good passers. Uh, and they're just two guys that seem to really like playing together. It's a new day at Max South. We are excited to share some great news. In our continued effort to support Mississippi businesses, Max South is now offering local advertising support. Through high quality programming, we combine traditional television and premium digital advertising, allowing your multimedia campaign to reach your targeted audience at any time on any device. Call Max South Media Sales today at 662-701-8628. So even in this drill right here, let's make sure we're driving it hard. Hey, we're still having some guys throw the ball off the wall over here. Know that when it comes back around to Elijah's spot. As far as what we're known for, you know, I think a lot of coaches would say the same thing, but I, I hope we're known for a team that night in and night out is going to play hard, you know, and, and try to play harder than their opponent. Sometimes that's difficult, uh, you know, and a team that's going to compete. And, and, you know, and I hope we're a team that's, you know, not necessarily that team on somebody's schedule that they're looking forward to playing just because of, you know, the fact that maybe they know we're going to have some pieces and we're going to scout you and try to know what you do well and take you away from some things and that, you know, you're going to have to play well uh, on a night that you face Amory. And that that's a process that we've gotten to, I feel like, because, you know, a few years ago, they were probably circling that game against Amory because they knew just where we were at, you know, maybe those things weren't going to take place. So, the process of getting them there to, to playing hard every night, being willing to compete. Uh, and then the thing that I've seen for the past couple of years that I've been trying to hone into them is just the expectation to win. You know, now that we, now that we compete, now that we play hard, okay, now we've got something that we're proud of. Well, we want to expect to win every night we step out on the floor. 
for our rivals, you know, one thing that hasn't changed is we've got some, some county rivals in our county tournament with, with Aberdeen and the Smithles and Hatley and Hamilton. We play that county tournament the first of January every year. So those are always games that you know you want to compete and win. So many tie-ins from family relations and, and everything where those you know guys want to win those games. And so those, those teams are always rivals, always have been here in Monroe County. Uh, and then you got your division rivals. And for us, that's kind of changed over the past couple of years. When I first got here, we were in a 4A division with some Ponentox and Shannons and some of those teams. So, it, you know, in those years, I would say those teams were some of our rivals. Uh, being in 3A for the past three or four years has changed a little bit. You know, we had some battles with Boonville, a uh, really good team and program up there. And so they kind of became a, a rival for us and during those couple of years. Uh, Nettleton's been right there with us over the past two years. They've moved divisions with us. And so our games with them are always intense and, and a battle that seems to always get get down to the final possession. Uh, but, you know, those schools are all pretty close to us. And like I said, there's a lot of kids know each other. You know, kids play in the summer with each other and against each other outside of school ball. So, you know, you can tell those games when you step on the floor playing against some of those teams that the kids just are a little bit more in tune and they want to, you know, take care of business on that night. And, and it, you know, it makes it fun for everybody. I think Amory as a, as a town, you know, maybe it hasn't always been a basketball school. There's definitely some years where, you know, if you've got a product on the floor that, you know, people are proud of and like to see, they'll show up and they'll fill this gym up. And you know, I, I feel like this gym gets as loud as any gym uh, in North Mississippi. You know, it's kind of small and, and, and been here a while, but it definitely, when we fill it up, it's, you know it and you can hear it and you know, can think back to some games that, you know, it, it was just a little bit louder than normal and, and miss those times and those games during COVID. Uh, you know, hopefully we're back now where we can fill the gym up and we've already seen some good attendance uh, in addition to knowing, you know, football is still playing and stuff. So we've yet to see a good home game against a good rival uh, in basketball season. Uh, but we're, we're kind of in the middle of that now and really expect in January and February we'll have some really good really good at games and, and, and crowds to support us. But yeah, Amory, Amory likes her basketball and they like their soccer, they like their football. You know, there's a very athletic town that, that seems to always support, especially if, if you seem to be working hard and doing what you're supposed to, people are gonna to wanna to come check you out. Our ultimate goal, you know, obviously would be to to play till the, the final game of the season, you know, and get to the get to Jackson. That's something that I've never got to experience as a coach. So that's, you know, I want to get there, uh, you know, and play in that final game and possibly win a state championship. So that's that's always your ultimate big time goal each season that you get started. Call a lot of stuff, y'all call. Okay, defend, rebound, run something. You're trying to score and win that two minutes. Y'all be ready to come on. Hey, starting with a free throw here, White shoot. What makes a good high school basketball coach, man? That's uh, that's an interesting question. I think the first thing I would I would get, tell anybody is you got to be willing to you know tie your shoes up and, and be willing to get down and, and get dirty and work hard, you know. Because all of these high schools around here, any coach that I talk to, you know, you you do a lot more than just coaching the games of basketball and whether it's scheduling or whether it's dealing with parents or dealing with kids and their grades in the classroom. There's so many hats that you wear as a high school basketball coach. And so you have to have a passion and a heart to do that because if those other little things, you know, really bother you, I feel like that's gonna take away from your experience and just coaching the games and coaching your team. I've been blessed in, in my experiences and the way that I come up through the coaching ranks and the different coaches that I played for, I feel like helped me truly see what it was going to look like. I don't feel like it, you know, it's caught me off guard. And just that mindset of being willing to do all the little things and that go into coaching, you got to have that servant leadership, that mindset and that heart. And uh, I feel like I was able to do that when I started and uh, definitely a big thing in, in being a high school basketball coach. Game nights are special, you know, because it's kind of where everything comes back together, uh, where you get to show other people what you've been working on, uh, what these guys have been working on, and, you know, we spend a lot of time and effort into what's going on here. And I tell the guys all the time, you know, probably in every stands, in every game that you play, is somebody that's maybe has no 
thought or anything about Amory basketball and what that means and what it looks like. And you know, you're going to play a game in front of somebody, and they're going to go away with a, you know, an idea of what it is now. And is what are they going to remember and say about you? You know, are they are you a group that really competes and plays hard, you know, that loves to compete, that expects to win? Uh, that's unselfish, you know, that can control emotions. You know, I think that happens to us all the time with, I, I tell them all the time too, basketball is a game of mistakes, you know, and so constantly there's a team making a mistake and there's another team trying to overcome a mistake that they just made. And so be proud of what we're putting on the floor, the product that we're putting out there, uh, and then year in and year out, can we sustain that and can we be that team that, you know, holds themselves to a high standard, expects to win every night, and like I said a while ago, just a team that nobody's looking forward to playing on that given night.